name. We thank you that when we do so, you move on our behalf and shift things in our lives, situations, families, in our city, in our nation. We give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Say amen with me. Before you take your seat, please welcome your neighbor. Thank you so much, musicians. May God bless you. Bless everything to do with you. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here tonight and uh, greet a few more people when you have done so, then you can take your, your seat. Hallelujah. Always beautiful to be in this place. Let's quickly recap while others would walk in. We have been talking for the last six sessions on principles of impartation. These are key principles and we are pushing on them. Hopefully, we can try and finish them today. Principles of impartation through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Romans 1 verse 11 for I long to see you Apostle Paul writes so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established we say to you clearly therefore you can be established unless and until there is impartation in your life Deuteronomy 34 Verse 9. Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him, so the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. We said to you some six sessions ago that one of the ways of breaking limitations upon our lives is through the medium of impartation. What is impartation? We just explained to you that indeed impartation is a divine deposit. God's spirit deposits something in your life. You may not be aware of it, but down the line you begin to see the manifestation of it because your life would have changed. Certain things that may have eluded you in the past or certain courage that you may have missed, or certain clarity of mind that you didn't possess, suddenly is there upon you. And then you get to understand something happened. And if you're one that is spiritually discerning, you can trace back the moment and say, I believe when that person ministered to me, or when that person laid hands on me, or when that prophetic word was given, or when I read a Rema word, alone, specific word from the Bible, when it jumped off the pages of the Bible into my spirit, I sense a new impartation coming into my life. And then you begin to give God the glory. So impartation is there to break limitations. We are born with so many limitations from within and from without. Limitations in the sense that we are socialized that way. We meet many people. Some of them are authority figures. And they say words that will limit us. As times it's our parents unknowingly, without intention of hurting you or harming you, they will tell you, oh, this one will amount to nothing. Or they will tell you, you are not handsome. Or tell you, you are not pretty. Those words can't be uttered to human beings because they bypass their minds and lodge in their spirits. And therefore, they begin to be a trap and a snare upon their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. So if someone comes home to visit your children and they say, I don't don't accept that. Simply say, you know what, the words that you are saying are not good words. I cancel those words as an authority figure parent. You cancel those words. 
because if you allow those words to prevail, they get into the spirit of that particular child. And that child will grow understanding. Today, doctors tell us that children hear messages even from the womb. Huh? They can pick up rejection from the womb. They can pick up acceptance from the womb. They can pick up fights between a father and a mother in a house when a baby is in the womb. And then they will hear that voice that is always speaking rudely or roughly. And therefore, when they come out of the womb, they associate that voice that they heard from the womb to that, to that, to that though, those circumstances, roughness, rudeness, harshness, meanness, and therefore they are affected by that. So words are very important, and therefore words are also carriers of impartations. The words that you utter to someone. If you utter a goodly word to someone, it can change you. If you say words that are bad, they can also change them on the negative side. So words are carriers of life. They are carriers of uh, death as well. Proverbs 18, I believe, verse 24 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yeah, the tongue. So what you say can produce death. What you say can produce life in the name of Jesus. Let's start from there. Look at your neighbor and say, be very careful with your words. Yeah, touch their shoulder. I know you're just touching their shoulder. Just say, be very, very careful with your words. And therefore, words become uh, liberators of people or they bring bondages in the lives of people. Say, amen. We are talking of impartations today. How you can receive an impartation that can change your life forevermore. I say to you, I'm a sum total of many impartations that have come my way. Some unawares, but some deliberately positioning myself to hear or to get something from a particular person in the spirit and force my way, not in the natural, but in the spirit, until that person feels, you know what, I can't resist that man there. And therefore, I receive that which I came for. Say amen. Today you are sitting in this atmosphere today. I'm going to preach shortly. I believe that impartations can come to you and to your life in the name of Jesus. On Sunday, we spend time laying hands on people. Yeah, believe that something of a spiritual value or nature came into your life and that something will change your life forevermore. Say amen. Unfortunately, things of the spirit are not transacted in such a way that you, you can feel a stone falling over you. No, at times you don't feel anything. Okay, but really, there is transference. Yeah, as you sit under my voice, there is transference. You leave this place thinking, you know what, I can do that. Or, you know what, I feel something left me. Or, you know what, there is a change that is being effected in my life. Or, you know what, I'm no longer the same person again. Or, you know what, I was timid. But, man, when that man say this and that and that, I feel something leave me. Because I believe you, me, the natural world is not as as effective as the spiritual world. Hmm? The spiritual world is real. But unfortunately, you and I walk by sight. We walk by what we see. I see shepherd here, but I don't see demons that may be upon him. Hmm? This is shepherd. But he may be affected by great demons in his life. So if I can navigate in the spirit and see what is affecting him, what affects him in the spirit ultimately changes the physical. Say amen. Yeah, what affects you in the spirit changes the physical. You may come here and looking whole, but if there is some tormentors in the spirit behind you, they will cause you to manifest or manifest contrary to what we see. Say amen. All right. We say it is transference of divine virtues, transference of divine deposits, transference of supernatural graces. Say amen. We gave you five sources of impartation. I don't want to go quickly over this. I don't want rather to take time over this. We said three, five sources of impartation. We said number one, through divine encounters. Divine encounters, collusion with the spirit and the activities of the spirit will bring impartations in your life. I have had a fair share of my encounters. Some of them scary. Some of them that I don't want to talk about. Some of them I talked about long after because I didn't feel a release to talk about them. At times you think, will these people understand what I'm talking about? Or oh, they will think I'm mad. Or they think, this guy has lost it. But divine encounters are real, ladies and gentlemen. 
If you are to pray, pray for divine encounters. Say amen. Take to your neighbor and say, if you are to pray, pray for divine encounters. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, if you are to say, if you are to have divine encounters, pray for them. Say amen. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, pray for divine encounters. A younger preacher and an immature preacher will be affected by the response that you give. For me, I'm a veteran, so I don't care how... Yeah. But a younger pastor here, if I brought one of these pastors to preach here, if you looked at them the way you look at them, they would just feel that they are wasting time. Me, I will force you to say something that will encourage me. Yeah. And I'm never discouraged even by your looks, eh, the way you look. Some of you look resigned, like you are coming for, for a funeral. Hey, I am not an undertaker here. I'm here to give life. Say amen. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, this dude here is right there to give life to you. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's not easy. Remember, you are coming. One of these days you will be standing here and I will be sitting down. And I will want to write notes. And I will look at you like you are looking at me and say, huh? What is this man saying? <laughs> so that's why over time for me, if I see that you are stealing my anointing, I will come at you. Yeah. Until we get to the paramedic, amen, then I can leave you. <laughs> Already I have, I, have, I have someone who is saying amen to what I'm saying. I won't wire wire for too long. I'm just trying to fight my bearing here. Say amen. Through divine encounters, lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I am praying for divine encounters in my life. Amen. Right, what we're talking of divine encounters, we're talking of divine encounters from God. There are also encounters from the other world. Hey, some of you have had encounters from the other world. You have had visitations. There are ladies here that have visitations, men visiting them, unseen men hey, coming to molest them at night. I don't want to say how many ladies have experienced that. I know you won't lift up your hand, but, <laughs> but these are encounters, and they change your life. Yeah. Mm, I prayed for many ladies that say, Bishop, Somebody visits me. The moment the light is off, I feel a presence of someone. Then down the line, I feel a touch of someone. Mm. Then you ask, what type of a touch? It's a firm touch, but it's not a healthy touch. Mm. And then what happened? Somebody says, I keep quiet and see what happens. And then suddenly, they move in certain areas. Then I know, this is not God. Mm hmm this is not God. Yeah. yeah, ladies are pretending that they don't know what I'm talking about. Many or few of you here have had, yeah, you have had visitations. Yeah. yeah. At least Molly is free. Molly never used to be this free, but now she volunteers information. Some of it scares me. Hey, it's volunteers. Mm -hmm. That's Molly. Who else has had this type of experience? Ah, oh, you see? There. And occasionally, if you don't get them dealt with, they will contend for your marriage. Yeah, because then uh, <laughs> they are fighting with your husband. Yes. Oh, you, you don't know that? Hey, you people are so naive, isn't it? Mm. They will contend for your husband. They, eventually, your husband will feel that, uh, that, that, that he can't... It is real. Mm. Okay, I, I, I know I'm coming to my message, here, but I, I have to follow my heart sometimes when I'm preaching. And it is when I minister effectively, when I follow my spirit. Yeah, I have notes there. But here is what comes to be a rhema word to you. When an invisible man molests you, you know you've been molested by an invisible man. And therefore, any man who is spiritual, let's say you're a young lady, you have this spiritual boyfriend, or you're a married lady, you have this spiritual husband, 
anybody who's trying to be close to you will know that there's a fight here. Uh -huh. And therefore they feel repelled. And then should that man come forward for this? Should come and come and sit here. Should that man, should that man therefore possess you? No man will approach you. Yeah. They will be close to you. They will come. Say, how are you? This is Bishop Joshua. Put your hand together for him. His church is house of prayer. Mm. A beautiful bishop. Mm. Thank you, sir. Mm. What was I saying before I called bishop? Right, I was saying, if that man, your lady, is in the inside of you, there is a contending for your life. Mm -hmm. Until that man says at a certain point in time, you know what? When I'm with you, I feel like I'm with another man. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. When I'm with you, I feel like I'm with another man. Yeah. And therefore, even your characteristics change. Yeah. You want to fight that man at times. The same man that you claim to love. And you are very vicious towards him. If it's your husband, he just tries to say, Hi, mom, my darling, my, hey, my darling, good thing. Me, I think I have cast out many demons. Different types. Yeah. I am not deceived by the way you look. No, because you can look so nice but possessed in the inside of you. So I have to come to you and shake you a little bit. I have seen handsome some guys like this guy possessed. Yeah. Pretty ladies like this possessed. Yeah. Nice ladies like this possessed. Yeah. Yeah, sitting posh, but possessed. <laughs> <laughs> so it has nothing to do with your posture. Yeah. Everything to do with how you open your spirit yeah, to the other side. So divine encounters are real. Number two, what did we say? Sources of impartation. I could have persisted. <laughs> uh, through a father and son relationship. It's very important that you have an authority figure that you respect and honor. That when you are making some decisions, you may want to ask them. Yeah. Where do I go? What do I do? You see this man here. I love him to bits. Mm. Love him to bits. Stand up. and I love him to bits. Not that we don't give each other a hard time. No, we do. <laughs> well, I do give him a hard time. <laughs> but he's a good man. He's a good man. He bounces many things off me. Not that I'm, I'm, not that I'm desperate to hear about it. No, I think he himself feels he must bounce many things with me. What about this? How do you do this? How do you do that? And I'm always answering. In fact, I, with him, I'm always answering more than I'm here because he's asking me, what, what do I do there? What do I do there? But he is a bishop and he has his own churches. I don't have only him. I have many others. Mm. So, when you are talking, thank you, sir. When you are talking of fathers, have someone or a mother, someone in your life that can speak into your life. That can speak things that you don't want to hear. Yeah, because if you have someone who's always singing the same song like you, you are in danger. Someone who will say, oh, no. You say, but I brought this boyfriend here. I think he's the right one. You say, let me stay five day, one day with him. Give me this man. Let me talk to him. And then come back to tell you, this is not a good guy for you. Leave him. And you have been praying. Yeah. You have been praying. Remember I said on Sunday, guys are scarce. And you get this one who happens to like you. <laughs> and you have been praying and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And there is a, a, a bishop who just comes in and says, you know what? I talked to that guy for an hour. This guy is not good for you. Just, just leave him, please. Mm. There is a guy here after the service who came to me and said, I'm about to propose to a certain lady. Okay. And he says, please, bishop, can you go and talk to, to this lady? I will be watching from afar. But when I point, don't look at her. I will just point <laughs> once. I uh, mean, what I go through honestly in life. Huh? Uh, so I'm supposed to act like James Bond. So this is, this is not this Sunday. This is the other Sunday. So, so I won't tell you who the guy is because the guy is in this church. So he said, Bishop, are you ready? 
He waited for me here after. The, yeah, I kept on waiting. So he says, are you ready? Uh, to, I said, to meet the lady. Yes. I said, yeah, he says, yeah. So we arrived by the foyer there. He, and I'm looking this. He says, don't look. She's behind there. Yeah. Can you see those toilets near those toilets? And then she says, there. I'm looking that side. She says, there. So I tell her, he says, no, no, don't look. At it. <laughs> so I said, but how will I tell? There are many ladies there. He says, yeah, I hope you saw her when you turned around. She's wearing such and such. I said, no, I didn't. He says, yeah, turn around now. She's looking at her phone. Turn around quickly, Bishop. So I turn around. He says, do you see that one? Who else? I said, I saw two there. Who is? <laughs> she says, it is the other one. The other one. I said, okay. I said, all right, I've seen her. If it's the other one, I say, He says, go and talk to her. Find out yourself, since you are always finding out. Find out. <laughs> hey, the assignments I'm given by these crazy demonic people. So she says, find out if she is the one for me. Mm. I like it very much, but you go and find out. Mm. Me, I'm sent to find out. So I said, okay, I'm going to find out. I said, hi, hi lady, how are you? Mm. But I forgot to give the guy an answer. The answer is this. That lady is not your lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely because she has a strong spirit. The guy has a weak spirit. The guy will be dominated the rest of his life. Yeah. So I didn't want to tell this guy. So I'm telling him publicly uh, uh, so that he, he can hear. <laughs> it's always to tell people publicly. That guy, that lady is a strong will. Yeah. That lady is a no-nonsense lady. That lady is a tough lady. Yeah. That relationship will be lopsided. Just five minutes interacting with her, I just picked that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I saying the guy shouldn't go ahead? No. I've just said my verdict. Let them find out down the line if they get married. But I think I'm right. I also think I have the spirit of God, like Apostle Paul says. <laughs> that one is not a match from heaven. Mm -mm. Yeah. It will be a permissive will if they get married. And if they get married, that guy will always be tormented by that lady. Mm. And that guy will be told, you know what? You are lucky that I, 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 you are, we are married to you. You are very lucky. Yeah. Mm. You are, you, are, you are not my type, but look, I found myself with you here. And therefore, well, those are the words that will come out from that lady. You say, but Bishop, you made five minutes this lady out, you come about. Ha! That's my secret. <laughs> uh -huh. That's my secret. Mm. Believe you me, I have helped many people that way. I am not saying I don't, I don't want to be your errand boy. Please. Don't find your dude and come to me. I don't, that's not my ministry. This man, I just felt pity for him because he stood and waited for me. He waited for me a long time on Sunday when everybody had gone to just say the lady is outside there. So I thought, Lord, help me. Help me to descend and help me to help, to help this man. So this is the verdict that I'm giving and you're all hearing it. But what you don't know is the lady and the man. Let it stay like that. Say amen. Mm -hmm. You say, but Bishop, what about me? Yeah, you. I don't know. Find your own man. And run with your own man. Yeah. And you, find your own lady. Go ahead with your own lady. That's fine. Mm. But I'm not here to be doing that for people. No. No, no, no. That's not my job to do that. But this guy wanted me to do that. So I did that for him. Mm. There's another lady whom I did that for her as well. Yeah, but she refused. She says, ah, Bishop, you're saying that she's a lady, very pretty lady. She says, ah, you have your pretty wife. Now you're telling me when I've seen this guy, I said, don't marry this guy. This guy is not for you. She says, no, no, no. They went ahead and married. They are divorced now. Mm. I simply said, don't marry. Yeah. But she's sickly. Yeah. It costs her. It costs her everything about it. I came three times to her and said, don't marry this guy, please. And second time, don't marry this guy. Third time, don't marry this guy. Then I stop. Mm. Yeah, you don't say those things lightly. Yeah. It borders on it borders on control. Is that not so? Very close to control. Who wants to control people? I don't want to control people's lives. But should I feel something to say, I will say it. Mm. Yeah. 
there's someone here in this place. I've just looked at her. She's looked at me too. Yeah. And I told her, please don't do that. Don't, don't marry this man. Mm. I can say that because she loves me dearly, this lady here. So I can say that about her. But she, she, she said yes. And she went on and, and married a guy. The result was disaster. Mm. Yeah. But uh, oh no, she will come right. She is fine. She will come right. She will find somebody. She doesn't know I'm praying for her. Uh, say amen if you are here. Just join in. Say amen. You say the loudest amen so that they know I'm not fabricating the thing. Amen. How? Say amen. I told her. She's here. I told her clearly, don't, don't marry this person. Mm. Mm. Had I known anything about that, it's just to see certain patterns that this will be a, a problem. Mm. And she's a lovely lady, one of the ladies that I really, really like in this church. Mm. Yeah. But she did a James Bond on me. <laughs> But we are laughing about it whenever we are together. We are laughing and, and say, yeah, well, well, but I had said, I had said so. Mm -hmm. It's costly not to listen to a prophetic person. Yeah. Yeah, a prophetic person. How do you know these things? I feel them. Yeah. Yeah, because I've worked in the prophetic for a long time. So I feel them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God says, don't say anything. This relationship is wrong. Don't say anything. So I don't say anything. It's not everything that you see that's wrong you have to say. No, you have to be mature to say, hey, Labanaman, whatever you say, they won't listen to you. In fact, they will gang up against you. So don't say anything. But I'm just showing you to say, can you see that relationship there? It's about to fall apart. Mm -hmm. There's going to be pain there. So, Lord, do you want me to say it? No, don't say it. Just let it. Because the two of them are headstrong. They will not ever listen to you. Yeah, so don't, don't listen. They will even go and say, ah, Bishop said this and that and that. Does it know that we are in love and lean on each other? Until after a year, they are not leaning on each other. They are choking each other. Mm. So, so you just let them. Mm. <laughs> Who is in love here? Uh -huh. Yeah, you brought your lady to me easily. Yeah, you did. Mm. No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying... You are in love. Is it? You are in love. Are you in love? No. You are looking. <laughs> not is it? Never. You are not telling the truth. Ah, that's not true. There is no lady beyond uh, 20 something who is not praying for her husband. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, I have wasted a lot of time talking about this instead of preaching. Let me go and preach now. Maybe it helped someone. Maybe someone needed me to hear say that. Is, is that not so? Mm -hmm. All right. So you need, therefore, a father. Someone of authority that you can respect enough and say, this man or woman may appear wrong, but I trust their judgment. Let me see. Let me watch. That's a father to you. Yeah. That's a father. When a father speaks, okay, for me, with my natural daughters now, my natural daughters, I have had to cancel the thing in the spirit. Overrule them. Because their problems will be directly my problem. Yeah. Directly my problem. And therefore, I look and say, I don't like that dude. But I see my daughter is head over heels in love with that. And therefore, I take it higher. I play the game now in the heavenlies. Ah, without saying anything. Take it in the heavenlies. Mm. And then I just say, Lord, I don't like that guy there. Mm -hmm. Can that relationship break for me? Please, Lord, I don't like it. I see there are problems there. But this lady of mine, this young lady here is in love. Uh -huh. She thinks, I, she wants me to endorse this thing. Can I help me, Lord, to cancel the thing? And therefore I cancel the thing. Mm. And the relationship fizzles out. Yeah. And when she comes in, says, oh, that thing got finished. I say, really? <laughs> ah, really? Yeah, I said, that guy that you really loved? Yes. Yeah. So, so what happened? Ah, we just found that uh, we were different. I don't say it. Mm. That I'm the cause. <laughs> Though
Those that are married, I don't cancel. Because it's against scripture to cancel a mar marriage. I'm just talking of relationships. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? In marriage, it's too go far gone. There's a covenant there. Whether right or not, there's a covenant. Leave it like that. Mm -hmm. You chose your epitaph, live with your epitaph. Mm -hmm. You chose your black mamba, stay with your black mamba. Some people have black mambas for wives and black mambas for husbands. But it's too late now. Yeah. Hey, you, no, no, no. You, you don't want to change that. Yeah, it's, it's their situation. Hmm. It's, it becomes a thorn in your flesh. You live with that thing the rest of your life. Because you made that decision. Yeah. You made that decision. Should you leave, it will cost you one way or the other. It will dent you one way or the other. Divorce dents you one way or the other. It will affect you. I never meant to say all these things. I think these things are very important what I'm saying at this point in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me, I'm just trying to recap, but I find myself stuck in this thing. Mm -hmm. So it will, it will affect you. So what am I saying to the single ladies and single guys? Take your time to hear the voice of God concerning your partner. I know you have been praying. No man has approached you yet. It's not the first man that will approach you who's right, the right guy. Just take your time. Even though you look at him and think, wow, what a dude. You look at the biceps. You look at the muscles. You look at his dark skin and think, my God, Lord, I hear, I cancel all prayer. I just walk by sight. <laughs> the most dangerous people are these that have waited for long, like Molly. Mm. This become dangerous. Because any dude that appears and everything is right by that dude, according to your standard, Molly says, I've been waiting. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah I, need, I need this dude. Oh, no, 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 no. You have never seen Molly falling headlong in love. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 Joe, you don't know Molly. <laughs> Molly may appear tough right now, but if someone comes in who fits in the bill, Molly becomes like a child. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's how women are. So what helps you there? What helps you there is that you are sober. You have been praying for a man. Mm -hmm. Here's the danger. You've been praying and praying, and it seems like God is not answering. Suddenly, someone appears. Yeah. It's very difficult to be objective then. Lord, if I miss this guy, look at the sisters at HQ. Yeah. If I just delay, I know one of these guys, girls will take it. Then you say, yes. Then you're gone. Just step aside and say, if this dude is mine, no one is going to take him. Mm -hmm. And allow God to speak to you objectively. You will find that the things that you will see from guys, some of these guys, let me talk about guys, some of these guys that look complete, they are married. Hey, watch out for a guy who looks complete. He has a car, he has a house, Everything about him is in order. There's a wife there. Yeah. yeah. He may have come alone here in church and tell you stories. I'm looking. There's a wife. Yeah. Go deeper there. You'll find that. Any guy who is complete, very, very complete, be worried. Mm -hmm. Be very worried. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm leaving these guys. I'm coming to you. Mm. Because you're encouraging me. <laughs> Any guy who appears complete, young lady, you know that there's somebody there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he takes you for lunch. I, I say lunch. In his home and so forth. You go, I did not say dinner. I say lunch. <laughs> he takes you for lunch in his home. And you find that his suits are well ironed. Everything is in order. Everything. In, then watch out. There is Madame Tussauds there. I can tell you that. <laughs> there is Madame Tussauds. Yeah. <laughs> She may be in Belgium doing a course for six months. She will come back. <laughs> she will come back and the dude would have promised you heaven on earth until Madame Tussauds comes. Uh -huh. And you see a ring and you pray and say, I hope it's in the wrong finger. And you look again, oh, it's in the right finger. And you think, I think I know what it is. It's his sister. Until you see him holding him. 
and kissing him on the lips. Oh no, I didn't see properly there. I think it's just a holy kiss. You are justifying all these things. <laughs> so what am I saying here? Fathers and mothers in the spirit. These are able to help you and descend. You are too much involved to think objectively. You need someone who's not in love with that dude. For example, Pastor Berlin, if you bring that guy, I'm not in love with him. Mm. I will be able to objective if you say, ah, this is Berlin, the Lapano will goes. Hey. But knowing you, you, you have been praying. Yeah. You then go take it underground. Instead of taking it higher, you take it underground. So when you Berlin, they say, we change this is a pale Lapan. But we have a in Lapana. Say, but Puman, uh, in that black BMW with tinted windows, there is Belinda going. <laughs> Go on. I understand when we are a young lady, it's hard to wait. Is that not so? It's very difficult to wait. The competition is stiff. Mm. These men are few. When I talk of men, they are few. But even those few, among those of you, so therefore, you leave a small percentage of good men. Hey, I'm preaching, eh? You say, but Bishop, you say, but Bishop, why have we a church? Why have we a church? You have still have a church. They don't know how to look after a lady. Mm. They will send a lady message, call me. Call me, a lady. How does a lady call you? Hey. They will take a lady for lunch and say, ah, you know what? Yeah. Hey. Please, can you pay? Yeah. You know you have a wrong guy there. A stingy guy. Because by nature, when a guy falls in love, you're a giver. I mean, you just, even if the lady has asked you, not asked you, you feel like, say, what do you want? You want to give them. When as kwa 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 si kababa wen. Eh, it demoni li kababa lady. A lady must be looked after by you as a man. Eh. Let her feel that man, anything I ask, this guy can deliver. Mm. Is that not so? Yeah. We are Pumundi 100 rands, we can change. We can change here. We can change here 20 dollars from 100. <laughs> How many attended our couples meeting on Friday? We were talking about sex. Hey, did you attend? Did you enjoy? She was bad as. Did you not attend? We call, you know, we call, there were single ladies that attended this. We were talking about sex. As it is from the Bible, from the book of Proverbs, raw as it is. Hey, did we not enjoy? Hey, <laughs> they wanted another one. You should have brought your husband talking about sex. It's a beautiful subject. Mm. It's a subject to be discussed continually. Amen. I want to take another. Last year, we had the subject of sex for two months in church. Two months. It covered pornography, but it covered pure sex. Mm. Men, the church grew when we were talking about sex. Even the heathens came. said, <laughs> Remember, how many were they hearing the subject on pornography? Yeah. Hey, see, chaya, pornography. So, chaya, gonke from masturbation to bestiality to incest. See, that's what they're gonke look at. And you know, we enter, look, but because it's cool, man, what's the bishop in Tambale, in Tambayan? Say, by Billy. Say, by Billy. Talk about masturbation. Did you know that many men masturbate? Yeah. Hey, many men in the middle of masturbate. Hey, to give yourself pleasure. Hey. 
And many men masturbate, they don't know the effect of masturbation. That organ of yours eventually fails. Mm. Because it is terrorized a lot by you. <laughs> through your hand. Hey. The organ just says, I'm tired, you know what? I'm just, let me die. Mm. It just dies. Now you marry when the organ is tired, my, 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 my friend. The organ is tired. Especially this age of 14, they masturbate like crazy. When you see them going to the toilet, they take longer than necessary. They are masturbating. Oh, they are masturbating. Many young men masturbate. You don't need to be a prophet to know that young men masturbate. And therefore, you play around with this organ, play around with it, play around with it, until it says, you know what? The only way I can function is when someone plays around with me. It gets used to your hand. Mm -hmm. How can you do you like what I'm talking about or you don't like what I'm talking about? Okay, so, so there you are. So you need fathers. Fathers then will come in and talk to you and help you in situations. Say amen. The third one. What did we say about the third one? Principles of impartation. Through laying on of hands. On Sunday, we preached about this and then laid hands on people. Okay, we did. So you received an impartation whether you know it or not. Lift up your hands and say, I'm staring the gift that was imparted upon me through laying on of hands in the name of Jesus. I stir it up. It's mine. I will use it to enhance the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four. What would you say number four? Through the prophetic word. We give you a scripture there. There is Ezekiel 2.22. I believe it's 2.22. Is that 2.22 rather? Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and sat on my feet and set me on my feet and I heard him who spoke to me. Prophetic words have an effect. They come into your spirit and hit you hard and therefore they effect a change in your life. That's a prophetic word. Prophetic word is so powerful. When it enters your life, it brings transformation. Yeah. We are not talking of prophetic word that says in your fridge, there are tomatoes on the right and there is meat on the left. That's rubbish. We're talking of real prophetic word that comes into your life to change your life. Mm -hmm. Transforming your life and changing your life. So there you are. Number five, what did we say? Number four, rather. That was number three. Eh? Number, three number four. Through number five, I'm sorry. Eh? An encounter with the Holy Spirit. We gave you people like David. Was changed. So, was changed. Uh, yeah, through an encounter with the Holy Spirit. We gave you David, Saul, and we then gave you different levels of the prophetic. Just three of them. There are many levels. David was an ordinary young shepherd until he encountered the power of the Holy Spirit through the oil on his head. King Saul, the first king of Israel, was an ordinary king. In fact, a very timid king. But the Bible says, when a flask of oil and that contents were released upon his head, he was turned into another man. Say amen. Turned into what? Into another man. First Samuel 10, verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of oil poured it on his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander? Can you see the things of the spirit needs anointing? They need anointing. Amen. You need to be anointed to function in the things of the spirit. Watch verse 6 of that same chapter. Verse 6 reads, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be and be church and be and be does it mean Saul ceased to look like what he was before? No. Something changed about Saul. Suddenly, he found himself wired differently. He is now a king. He now can rule. He now can stand. But he can command people to listen. And they follow him. That's being turned into another man. All right. Today. Say today. Stand with me. Let's deal with this few things here before. Today, 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 today. I'm giving you time as well, Baba Guarimbo, to catch up with me while I'm trying to catch up with myself here. 
as well. All right, seven results of the Holy Ghost impartations. Seven results of the Holy Ghost impartations. The first impartation is the impartation of divine faith. There are many types of faith in the Bible. Many types. Let me give you some that come to my mind now. There is saving faith, that is faith for salvation. There is faithfulness or faith, some Bible says, which is a fruit, fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Okay. There is general faith where Mark says, if you ask of anything you will receive, we call that general faith. But there is this type of faith, supernatural faith. This type of faith is not, is not active. It's passive. Passive faith. But passive in the sense that you don't struggle when you say something. No. You don't follow it up. Like the gift of working with miracles, you actually work a miracle. You find someone crippled and say, arise in the name of Jesus. As they stand, you are working a miracle through the power of the Holy Spirit. But special faith is someone who can just utter something to someone and bring judgment. Oh, you are saying this about me. Ah, today as you sleep, this is your last night on earth. You are not waking up tomorrow. They've just gone home. You don't wake up. Your heart ceases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, people who possess what we call the special gift of faith, which is among the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, when they possess the special gift of faith, here is the definition. God honors their words as his own words. And whatever they say, he miraculously brings it to pass. Here is the man Elisha. Remember Elisha? He's just taken over from Elijah. But Elisha has a bald head. As he comes in, kids look at him and mock him and say, Hello, Baldy. I mean, remember that story. Hello, Baldy. Hello, Baldy. Hello, Baldy. The guy was merciless. I don't know why he got annoyed. That's why when you possess this gift, you must walk in love. Aha. Uh -huh. You must be long suffering. Because if people annoy you and you are trigger happy, you kill lots of people. Eh, because you are trigger happy. So this man is trigger happy. He's a man of God. He's Elisha. They say, hey, Baldy, Baldy, what does he do? He calls bears to mold these guys. Hap, hap, hap. He's angry. She says, okay, you call me Baldy. If it was another man, he would say, hi, man, to the man. Hi, hi, hi. Do you even see John? But the guy had no time for that. Yeah, in anger, he unleashes the word. But he possesses a gift. Uh -huh. Once he says something, you're in trouble. Mm. It's a judgment. Okay. Yeah. From a man of God, it's not a case. It's a judgment. He just judges you. Yeah. And therefore, that's the end of your life. Right. Yeah. So, be very careful about what you say with some people in their anger. Mm. And therefore, they need to walk in love. Continually walk in love. Be long suffering. Because you can't hear that so and so say this about you and you unleash a missile. You are killing so many people. And God is not in the business of killing people, but giving people life. Yeah, we are not witches. Yeah. In the New Testament, we give life and not kill people. But occasionally, God will judge people, as you say. Mm. As you say. A yeah, young man came to me and said, Bishop, how come I, well, let me not even share this one. Let me leave it. Ah, uh, it's too... I can share it. Okay, let me share it. How 
come some people that that would have left your church and stolen your people dry up end up end up coming to you do you kiss them bishop i said no i don't kiss them i i hardly i only kissed one person if i remember just one <laughs> and i saw the effect of it it was so bad it's like a hiroshima thrown in japan yeah the americans are regretting today because they went to japan and threw a, a bomb in a place called hiroshima it is people are affected today parents that give birth they're giving birth to deformed kids because of world war what was it world war two was it one or two two world war two so it is these things that you i said no i don't kiss them no i don't i don't hardly say that except one person some time back and i don't want to tell you what has happened to that person it's none of your business but the rest <laughs> the rest I say, I just pray, Lord, and say, look, I'm not a good judge of this situation. I may judge this situation in the flesh. Oh, yeah, because once God told me that your enemies are not necessarily my enemies. Aha! Uh -huh. I learned a lesson. When God said, what you think are your enemies, they may be your enemies at your own level, that's low there. But my level is higher. I see someone I can use, though they've annoyed you, I will still use them. Aha! They may have insulted you, but how many times have you failed me? You have failed me many times. They are also failing you or failing me, but still I will use them in spite of them. So I begin to understand that when you say my enemy, my enemy, you are in the lower echelons of spirituality. Mm. If you take it higher, right now you're your, somebody who to, young lady who took your, your boyfriend away. You may think, man, God will never use you. You took my boyfriend. Oh, you'll be surprised the way God anoints them. Right. Ah, because you are at a boyfriend level. God is at a God level. And he is looking at the holistic picture and saying, this one is silly, but they are willing to go. They are silly, but they are willing to go. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Ah, so you are full of nonsense yourself and therefore you want to fight at a lower level and you want to bring god to your boyfriend level i told my church here that if your boyfriend lives please don't come to me crying to me you're wasting my time he's not used don't waste time don't, don't make me pray for your husband for you i mean not your husband your, your boyfriend husband wife i will pray but your boyfriend please don't waste my time you chose that guy, you were trolling out. Let cut. I won't be crying. I don't even put my prayer over a boyfriend. What for? Why should I waste my time over a boyfriend? A, a boyfriend? Say that there's any boyfriend. Never. Ten times, twenty times. That's your problem. But if it's your husband, it's a covenant there. Hey, I can pray for that. Never your boyfriend. So don't tell me anything about a boyfriend that left you or a girlfriend that left you. In fact, they must leave you more if you are, you are like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are going back here. Today, Lisa Puma Pelebusugula Pelega Veroglim Bamba Ganjanti. She's a Puma Motene Busugula Pane. It's just point one day. A special gift of faith, which is among the nine gifts of faith. We call them power gifts. There are three gifts that we call among the nine, that we call power gifts. Working of miracles, gifts of healings, and then special gift of faith. Yeah. That gift, when you have it, you don't struggle. You are not struggling like, just like Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, as he lifted him up, as he lifted, he worked a miracle, as he lifted him. If he remains seated down, no power. But as, say as. Now the gift of faith, Pastor Goriko, no. You just utter a word. You just wake up and say, Iwe, what And then you're done. You are relaxed in it. It's passive that way. But God says, you possess that gift. 
Whatever you have uttered, I've done it. Be it judgment, be it life, uh, be it difficult situation, be it barren wombs. Yeah. And you shake someone's womb and shake it. No. You shall have a baby. Yeah. In nine months' time, and I'm not saying you will have a baby, uh, you, you have no womb, you have a spiritual womb, but you are all right as a man. <laughs> okay. And then you're relaxed. You just wait for time. Time then reveals, provided there is activity with that couple. What is activity? They must have sexual intercourse. You can't say you will have a baby, no sexual intercourse. Where will the baby come from? Uh, you saw me saying to this man, get busy after this prayer, just, just go. Mm. Go and do whatever you must do. Whatever thou doest, do as quickly. <laughs> Anytime you get time, lock each other in a room. Okay, and fast. Hey. Work the works. Hey. You must work the works while it's daylight. For the night cometh where no man can. <laughs> Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You don't see these things. But you believe they are done. Yeah, you are not panicking. Ah, you have said it. You have uttered it. You know it will come to pass. You know it's a special gift of faith. Mm. Moses didn't lift up the road and say, I lift up the road over Red Sea. Red Sea, I kiss you. I kiss. No, God says, just lift up your head. Lift up your road, Moses. Isa Moana. Tell your neighbor, Isa Moana. Isa. 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 Just lift up the road. Don't panic. Yeah. An old man called Reverend Begu said, a man of God who panics, he has no enough God in him. Oh, just lift up the road. Relax. It's not you doing anything. It is your God who's working on your behalf. Mm. A certain man woke up at midnight. Special gift of faith. He woke up at midnight. He sends the devil around. When he looked in the spirit, he saw the devil sitting by the chair. Yeah. Then he stood up and said, Ah, oh, it's you, Lucifer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he went to bed. <laughs> if it was you, I bind you. I choke you. I kill you. I pluck off your ears. I will get your wife's stiletto. I beat you on the head. I will poke your nose. No gift of faith. <laughs> Why do some people look at situations and do they don't panic? The same situations that make you panic. They know they are God better than you. Yeah. Why does a thousand dollars make you panic when with others it doesn't make them panic? Yeah. I say a thousand dollars. Yeah. I can begin to think about it in my head. It will come. Yes, sir. Uh, it's that level of prayer mm -hmm. that now says, don't waste time. Say, just think about it. It will come. Just you thinking about it. God orders somebody somewhere. You feel like, I must find Bishop Nyati. I have 1,000 here. I know. Then you come and give it to me. I've never asked for you. I just thought about it. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Uh, many a times in building here, we were thinking about figures. Thinking. Just think. Lord, we need money. Yes, yes, and we're yes, just yes, thinking. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm talking yes, about? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is what we call, therefore, the impartation of divine faith. And therefore, lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I need this type of faith, especially in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zimbabwe is a very difficult country to live in. Yeah, we all are somehow living in the supernatural. Yeah. Those that are not, there is a kia kia ring of some sort. Kia kia kia. Yeah. kia. Look at your neighbor and say, you know how to kia kia you. Mm -hmm. I see. Kia kia. So divine faith. Uh, gentlemen, it's point only point number one here, but let's go. Mm. This is a strong conviction that nothing is impossible. Strong conviction that nothing is impossible. That says, I am now in my zone. Say, I'm now in my zone. Say it one more time. Say, I'm in my zone. Nothing moves me. Say, nothing moves me. I am in my zone. 
Uh -huh. At times when you are preaching and standing near, that zone can visit you. You feel my God? I am in my zone here. Anything I say here will happen. Yes, uh -huh. You're in a zone. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. In a zone. And when you are in that zone, your boldness is, is madness. It's near madness. Yeah. Those that are in the flesh think you must be crazy. Yeah. You know you are in your zone. Ah. I, I was in Swaziland preaching for another man. Big church. The biggest church in Swaziland. I'm preaching. I'm, I'm saying to, 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 to this couple. Hey, I don't know why. Normally you want to preserve people and never say this thing. I say, look, there seems to be a problem here between the two of you. You, you, you know the man. The man said, oh no. Oh no, my bishop really told. It's packed. I'm saying these things. He says, no, no, no. We have no problem. I said, no. There's a problem here. He said, no, no, no. And then I turned my attention to the wife. The wife is weeping already. The conviction is hitting her. Men are always liars, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So never look at a man when you're dealing with this. Yeah. Men will lie with a straight face. The woman cries. I said to the man, stand up, both of you. I'm very mad now, inside. I'm irritated. I said, why are you lying to me? Why is she crying? I turned out. Why is she crying when you say there's nothing wrong? It turned out the whole thing is falling apart. So my intervention is very important. Am I risking my life by saying there's a problem here? Yes, I am. But I'm in a zone. Ah, I'm in a zone. So when I'm in a zone, I get fearless. Hey, if you find me outside, outside the zone, I'm a very timid man. Mm. But when I'm in the zone, I won't bump me. Yeah. If God says I must be healed, I'll come and punch you. Boom! Okay. We are in Zanu Bishop. I am now healed. You stop criticizing me. Ah, I'm in the zone. Are you hearing me? I'm in the zone. Hey. But you better make sure that you are in the zone. We are trying to take a look at our We should be to Say in the zone. Number two, number two. Let's move. Number two, number two. Should you feel like sitting down, some of you that are not fit, you can sit down. I know your flesh is big, so you can just sit down. But if you want to stand up, it's nicer when you're standing. Because I'm standing up too. I've been standing up since I don't know when. Since gym. Yeah, almost uh, one and a half hours at the gym. I'm standing up. Yeah. There is impartation of God's grace. <laughs> amazing grace. Grace is amazing. It can take the valiest of sinners and turn them around. A person that you have written off and said, this one, good for nothing, and grace lifts them up. Have you ever wondered that you were better than others yourself? That person that you were better of than, or better, better than them. But you see somehow, God lifted them up and picked them up. You are going to listen to that person who was a bad person. It is grace. Say amen. Touch your neighbor and say, the grace upon me, you can never explain it. You can never explain it. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So we have different graces here. Mm -hmm. Don't compare your grace with someone else's grace. Strife will enter your life. Mm -hmm. Different graces. My grace is different from you. Mm -hmm. What I may say sometimes, I have grace for it. You don't have grace for it. If you say it, I have grace for it. Hey, you should have made me talk about sex. Hey. I, you wish you were there. What's the difference? Grace, no grace. Ah, you are blessed. That's the difference. So you in your own grace you'll be able to do certain things, certain stuff that would amaze many. But if I try and stand in your grace, I fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I fail. Quez is a singer. Joy is a singer. There are many singers here. Yeah. Can you imagine me if I decide to go and sing on Sunday? I Because I can lie crazy and gangala. Ah, and can you imagine if Pastor Carl 
tries to dance on his hand like snowy. Yup, 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 yup. Snowy. He was in South Africa. In our churches in South Africa. Snowy people will pay money to see him dance. He may sing four or five songs, they will pay money. Because there is a grace over him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, you feel when he sings a song, he shouldn't finish. Mm. Yeah, you want to see all his moves. At one time, he danced until he turned red. He's red anyway. But he turned red like, yeah. That's his gift. Mm. But demand a refund. But it's clearly refund. Snow is a gift. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Oh, say I have a gift. Say it again. Say I have a gift. In the name of Jesus. Say it one more time. I have a gift. Mm. This gift, therefore, is divine ability. This gift gives one the skill and the wisdom to work under normal circumstances or under circumstances one will not work under normally. Mm. Difficult circumstances. May I have been a pastor for many years. I know pastors that can't pastor small people because they have been big, isn't it? May I can pastor small people, fewer people. It doesn't bother me. You are few here. Even in Sunday, you are few. I, I'm comfortable with that. I, because I'm a church plant. Amen. Mm. Yeah, I am very comfortable. There are some people that get the anointing when people are many. When they are few, they lose the anointing. Mm. Yeah. You are few, isn't it? In Premier. Just look around. Look at the chairs behind. Turn around. Maybe you haven't turned around for a while. Turn around. Can you see all those black chairs? Ah, you are not there. But it doesn't really, really bother me. It doesn't bother me. Right, number three. Let's move. There is impartation of divine revelation. <laughs> to know things by the Spirit of God. It's called revelation. To know things by the Spirit of God. Can't you say, but how do you know this? Oh, by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things that are not so obvious, they are hidden. This is called revelation. Lift up your hands and say, I need revelation, Lord. Say it one more time. I need revelation, Lord. One therefore begins to see things in God's perspective. Aha. Uh -huh. It's a different sight altogether. Never trust your natural sight more than your spiritual sight. Never. You get into trouble. And therefore, young ladies, when a dude approaches you, look beyond the physical. Ask God to give you spiritual insight about the guy. Mm. Yes. Because what you see on the external is not exactly, may not exactly correspond or align with what's in the spirit. All right. Then you get into trouble. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Most guys know how to camouflage. Yeah. They know how to cover up. They know how to, they have been in the game for a long time. They know how to trap a lady. Because ladies at times they are foolish. I mean, they are very easy to trap. <laughs> Look at the lady next to you who is not married and say, May foolishness leave you now. Hey. Mm. A guy just says, I love you. You have met him two days. I love you. You're <laughs> Wake up. Stop crying. Assess the situation. Amen. Uh, stop crying. You foolish lady. What are you crying for? Uh, are you crying? Don't you know he's a black member ready to devour you? <laughs> he just brought flowers. I am really touched. By Joe, it was Valentine. And he brought me flowers. You are crying over flowers. Assess the guy. Stop crying. Assess the guy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, they are five dollars. Yeah. Some are red. Some are pink. Why are you crying? Be sober. Say, I see the flowers. Yeah. But yes, let's talk. You say you love me. What do you know about me? What do you know about me? Where are we going? What do you believe in? Yeah. Which church do you go to? Who is your past? Do you have a past? In the, yeah. Do you have a wife, for example? And look at him in the eye when you say, do you have a wife? <laughs> ah, but the foolishness of young ladies. Hey, look at the young lady next to you and say, foolishness prevails in your mind. You are a fool. Come out of that thing. Come out of it. So we need revelation. We need to see beyond the natural. Say amen. amen. 
We need to see beyond the what? The natural. In Jesus' name. Number, number what? Number four. There is impartation of divine models. Hey, when I say models, I don't mean Hollywood models here. Impartations of models or strategies. Maybe a better word is strategies. Impartation of divine strategies. This refers to patterns. I can share with you. Go, uh, go, go down. You'll find, uh, you'll find a few strategies that we put there. Divine strategies. David Sling is a divine strategy. Why didn't God allow David to use a spear to kill the guy and throw a spear? He wanted a sling. Because the wisdom of God appears foolishness to a man. Amen. A sling. Amen. Versus a warrior. A tried warrior. Oh, Gideon slim. Gideon comes with an army of 22,000. God says, no. If you are fighting the Midianites with 22,000, they are too many. Where have you heard that in an army people are too many? Yeah, he says, sift them. He sifts them. 10,000 remain. That means the rest are wiped out. Taken out. And those 10,000, he wants 300. He fights a war with 300. 300. That's a divine model. It appears foolish. Moses wrote, Lord, why didn't you give Moses a, a, a nuclear weapon, at least, to kill all the tithes in the wilderness? But it's a road that he uses. It's a strategy from God. Joshua's strategy was simple to encircle Jericho once for six days. One time, up to six days. On the seventh day, do it seven times. One, two, three, four, and then do what? Shout. Well, the priests were blowing the trumpets. Against Jericho, a fortified city. A city that historians tell us that its walls, the thickness of its walls, chariots could run side by side, abreast. Yeah, there are those walls. By shouting Joshua, shout Joshua, Amen. the walls Amen. fall apart. Can you see the divine models of God? They may not appear like there is some cleverness in there. They may appear foolish, but follow them. You will succeed. Follow them. Yeah. When God gives you a, 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 an assignment that appears foolish, follow it. You know it's God, follow it. It's an amazing assignment. It will take you far. Mm. But God, this, will this work? Yes, do it. Do it, it will work. Just do it, it will work. Yeah. Do it. Here is a divine model. This piece of land here was less than a piece of land from, from there. This very land here that we're sitting on, that's 10 acres now, was this land, the center here. Yeah. There was a church here to build a 200 seater here. So city council takes my land. Yeah? And they say, we're putting a cemetery on your land. Sorry. So we're taking our land. Yes. We'll compensate. How? But sorry, we have no land in the city. Yeah. Here's the thing. They call me, when I'm leaving, the man says, ah, but we have a small piece of land. The Spirit of God says, take it. That, that's your land. I said, but remember 10,000. He says, yeah, that's it. Take it. So I say, yeah, I want it. Even the man says to me, but you, I'll wait to put the 10,000 sitter on this piece of land here. He said, give it to me. That land has become 10 acres. Are you hearing? This is this land. I came here, the only people that were here were checkers. This was all push. Mom, you are not here. Yeah, these pieces of land were not even sold. This is what happened here. Mm. That's why I put a plaque there underneath. Will you not revive us again? Mm. Can you see? The wisdom of God is different. You look at a guy with a car, driving a car, and you look at another one who's not driving a car. You prefer the one who's driving a car. And yet God says, that guy there, he's a chebe chebe boy, but he will take you far. All right. Ah, you want the made one now. You go for that one who is self-made, who drives a car, the competition is high. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. The rest of your life, you compete for him. Amen. Until you die. Whereas that chebe chebe guy didn't have a car. But on the inside of him, the vision, he has more than cars. He has a house. He has vision. He has destiny. You say, I oh, know, I want to do it with a car. You miss it. Hmm. 
Always the wisdom of God is far better than the wisdom of man. Number four, number whatever. There is impartation of divine truth. This refers to divine voice, divine truth. We are talking of impartation. Divine voice. Train yourself to hear the still small voice. It's very important. Divine models, divine truth. Galatians 1, verse 11. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. This is divine truth. Number, number, number six. There is impartation of divine will. This refers to divine practice. This is the will to do the will of God. James 1 verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. Number seven. There is impartation of divine power. 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 Divine power. The scripture there is X1 verse 8. Let's read it together. One, two, three. But, but, when, when do you receive power? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me starting in Jerusalem right up to the utmost parts or the end parts of the world. Can I give you four things then we go home. Sit down please. I know you are feeling tired. Mm. How to cause the flow of the Holy Ghost impartations? There are four things. How to cause the flow of Holy Ghost impartation? Here's number one. Recognize servants of God and desire what they have. I'm talking about spiritual speaking now. Recognize the servants of God. I'm not talking of property, housing, whatever. No, I'm talking of what God has deposited in them. Recognize the servants of God and desire what they have. In other words, serve in the house. Number two, catch the wave of the Holy Spirit. There are always frequencies in the spirit realm. It's up to you to lift up your spiritual antenna to catch that. Yeah. God is speaking forevermore. It's up to you to lift up your antenna. So catch the wave of the Holy Spirit. Number three, maximize on divine visitations. Yeah, I'm going to dwell on this one. Maybe I'll come back to this one uh, just now. But let me give you number four, the last one. Then let me come to number three. Give us number four, say, or oh, ma'am, whoever. Number four. Number four. Strive to go beyond the veil. So three and four I'm going to talk about. Let me start with four. Strive to go beyond the veil. I will explain what I mean there. Hebrews 10 verse 19. Therefore, I, the scripture that you had put there is good. It was 10. Now, Therefore, brethren, having boldness, say having boldness, enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Now, in the New Testament, we don't have compartments like they had in the, New Test in the Old Testament. Remember in the Old Testament, you would enter by the door, the priest that we're serving, and then outer court, and then there will be a curtain, and then there will be the holy of holies. This curtain, therefore, only the high priest entered annually there. Also, Moses entered any time because God will call Moses any time for instructions in the wilderness. Moses will enter beyond the veil, but anybody else who entered before the veil, before beyond the veil, God killed them. But Moses is summoned by God. The high priest, Aaron, or later Elias, Zadok, and many others. As God called them, they will enter beyond the veil and talk to God. But usually once a year, Moses all the time. Because God talked to Moses all the time. Now in the New Testament, when the Bible says, enter beyond the veil, it's simple saying that there are limitations that are imposed on you in a church service. Yeah. They're imposed by how hungry you are for the things of God. 
What made me receive an impartation in February, the month being, the year being 97, sitting on row number four, one, two, three, four, is that the people that were sitting before me were not hungry than I was. Yeah, they were there excited, but I came from Africa. It was the last day. I told God, I am not going home this way. This, way. this man has what I want. I don't care whether you turn this service upside down, it becomes my service, yet this man has come for this city. I believe I'm more hungrier than anybody else here. And therefore my hunger is going to draw God. God is drawn by hunger. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? What am I doing there? I am passing beyond the veil. Everybody comes to the veil and says, yeah, we are enjoying ourselves. The level of your hunger will determine the height of your spirituality. If you are in a service and you come neutral and hope that I will move you to spiritual, you are giving me a task that's not mine. I'm not God. But if you come to a service, all of us come to a service on a Sunday and say, you know what? I want to receive more. Amen. I want this man, even if he's talking about sorrow, he must change and talk about what concerns me. Amen. I will be compelled in the spirit to begin to speak about the things that I didn't want to speak about. I will find myself changing my topic because you have placed a demand on God and therefore God says change what you are talking about. Have you ever noticed with me I have a topic and then I veer off a somebody's demand. Amen. Aha. It's a law of supply and demand in the spirit. You demand God supplies. Amen. You come in like you are sitting it is, it is not, I'm worried, nothing comes to you. Aha. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? That's why when we are sitting in a church, oh, when we are sitting in a church service, don't sit to sleep, you fool. Sit to say, I'm drawing something. I'm drawing something. I'm drawing something. This man or woman may be touching on something, but I have an issue here. You must address it and prophesy over this issue. Before I leave, I'm coming from Chabalala. I'm coming from Entumbane. I left my home early. I didn't eat breakfast. This man now is sitting. I see him going to Cholocho and yet I'm in Zirigazi. Lord, turn this man around. I want him to address my situation. He will come to you. Uh -huh. Stand up, 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 stand up. It's called blessing. It's called blessing a demand on the anointing. Uh -huh. And when you preach to people that you have placed a demand on the anointing, the service takes a different turn. When you preach to natural people that are full, mothers can attest to this, those that are nursing. The cry of a baby means many things right. to a mother. Amen. There's me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, leave, 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 leave him alone. Leave him alone. Yeah. Ah, just leave him alone. Naughty, naughty baby, naughty baby. There is another cry. Yeah. The mother knows something is wrong here. Amen. Attention immediately. God is like that. Amen. The Bible says he's a multi-breasted God. Yes, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, there is a cry. Your cry is a dead cry. That's why he never comes to you. But the day you cry and sing, ah, he will leave everybody and come to where you are and come and minister to you because it's a different cry. Your cry is too ordinary in church. No wonder no issues are ever addressed about you. Uh-huh. We are listening when we are preaching. Lord, where do I go now? Do I go this side? You don't see it. We are listening. Do I go this side? Do I leave those notes? Do I follow this thing? Is there a well here? Is there somebody that I'm ministering here? Or somebody is reaching out and say, Preacher, go on and explain this. Go on and explain this. And the preacher leaves his topic. I was sitting on road number four. Let me address what I was doing. Sitting on road number four. Is day number three is the end of the conference. I'm in a foreign land. I'm in a theater called the Majestic Theater in Christ Church in New Zealand, row number four. Row number four. I said, No way. I have issues back at home. I have a church. I just started a church, a small church. 
it is between 30 to 50 people. On a good day, they all come. On a bad day, 40% of them don't come. Just like here. <laughs> if you just decide, I'm not coming to church. You're not coming to church. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to church. Yeah. So I have a small church. I cannot go back to that church. It's too small. I want you to do something in my life. Impact me. Impact me, Lord. This is my day. So I guess I was more hungry than everybody in that theater. When this man stood up, he stood up like this. Yeah. Move of God began to come. A cloud issued out of him. Left hand, not right hand, left hand. And issued and turned. It's a big theater. Turned. I could see the moment it left the theater that this was mine. How do I know? I don't know. I just thought, my God, if I'm seeing this cloud, I know it's going to turn. But it went the opposite direction, Gorengo. I'm sitting there, it went that way. I thought, yeah, go wherever you want to, you come back to me. Yeah, you come back. It went that side and it turned. It turned run number four. Everybody, and it came to me and circled on me. Mm. Hey. And if you hear of revival that hit Harvest House, it's a result of that cloud. For many years we had revival. That's why if you read my book, you can read the testimony there. there. What is it called? Desperate for God's presence. Yeah. So it's written there. It's written long back. Why? Because I was more hungrier than casual nibblers. I've lived with the British. When you eat with them around the table, they don't chew. I mean, they don't, they don't chew like you and I chew. They just throw in little pieces. You're playing around with food. You fool. <laughs> eat with a hungry African. I will use two hands. In the spirit, you must be like that. What you call a commandizer, you're hungry for the things of God. No sophistication with God. Some of you come to God with so much sophistication. Oh God, you know, if you want, you're a fool. For me, if I'm praying for people, I'm just looking for hungry people. Amen. If I look for a sophisticated person, you, you, you steal my anointing. Let me leave. Let me go. I find somebody. Amen. Bam. It is that person Hallelujah. that can change a service. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Go beyond the veil. Amen. Don't see the veil and say, ah, papi ndiki up. Ah, no, I can't go. There's a veil. Hey, Lord, if you kill me, you kill me. I'm finding myself there. I'm crossing the veil. Try this every Sunday when you come to church. You will see the visitation. You will see and hear God addressing your issues personally. And you think, Bishop was told by someone. No, I pick it. <laughs> but because you come on neutral, and therefore, I have no business to speak to you. Yeah, I'll just preach and preach and go home. Mm -hmm. Until someone. Did you see a man who came from Masungo on Sunday? Amen. How many saw the man who came from Masungo there? Amen. That man was hungrier more than you all. All of you collectively put together. This man left Masungo in the morning to attend a service and drive back. He came with his pastor, his, his reverend, just for a service. He said, I want to hear that man preach in person. Amen. I want to sit down. And, so he drove. Masuiko is about 300 kilometers. So he left early to come and sit for a service. You were here in Blaue. You came late. Can you see the difference? You came late because you're still fixing your wig and your makeup. Yeah. You finished the whole bottle on, of, of your perfume. On, yeah. And then you, you looked at yourself in a mirror. You're just looking and you walk in. What if I walk that way and then uh, this way? And then you went that, like that and, and you then, uh, then... Then what are you coming to church for? Yeah. You're a model. You wanted to, to come when everybody sits down and come and stroll, having eaten your porridge. Yeah. This man said, no. We're living early. Living early. The difference is you will watch this man change. If you follow him, he's a soldier. Follow him, you will see change. His pastor talked to me today and said, Bishop, what you did for that man, this is Mtang's testimony. Listen to this testimony. Amazing. He says, What you did to this man that I brought there is what you did to me some 30 years ago. I said, 30 years ago? He said, Yes. You did not know me. You invited my pastor, by my pastor in Popoma, in a hall to preach. One time I went there. Only one. 
He said, my pastor invited me, invited you. You were preaching, you may not remember. When we were closing, you just looked at me and said, young man, come here. And you ministered to me. When you ministered to me, you said to me, you will speak before kings. I've spoken. <laughs> and then you said, revelation is coming upon your life. And that day, I read the Bible differently. When I opened the Bible, I found that I have understanding. Those that have heard Mr. preach will tell you that he has some understanding of the Bible that is supernatural. He can take one verse and just swing on it. We call it dancing upon the coin. Yeah, he can dance on a verse. You can feed for three hours on a one verse. Revelation. He said, when you prayed for me, I received that because you spoke about revelation in my life ever since my life changed. He said, when you prayed for that man there, I sensed something like that was coming upon him. Uh -huh. You were in a service. Guess what you said when you said, when you, I go cousin, I'm touch, I bishop, it's called silly, yeah, bishop, I'm touch, bishop, I cousin, then I'm a joke, I can't was it, you a fool, fool. Somebody drove far away. You came late to church. Do you think you are ready for God when you live in Chabalala and you come late? Someone lives in Masungo, they come. You're joking. You're joking. God will bypass you continually because you are not serious. You don't want to cross the veil. Let me give you point number three. This is number four. Let me give you four so that we go home. We need to go home. We need to go home. Give me point number here. Yeah, maximizing on divine visitation. I'll just show you something here. Maximizing on what? Divine visitation. <laughs> When, when you are in the presence of God and God shows up, maximize on that occasion. Even if you feel like if you're not too hard depressed to go to the toilet, don't go to the toilet. Stay. If you think I can hold this, I can hold this water in my, in my blood, stay. Yeah, stay. Don't, don't rush. Rush. Anyway, what I'm teaching about here may seem crazy to stay. Amen. Unless you are really hard pressed. Because in your going out, when you come in, the, the cloud has passed. It has passed. Yeah. God will not wait for you to go to the toilet there. It has passed. Oh, make sure before you come into church, empty your bladder. Yeah. Empty your blood. Let me show you a woman. Who knows how to entertain God? Maximizing on divine visitation. When God visits you, detain him as long as possible. Watch this scripture. Let's read it. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to a place called Shunem. Say Shunem with me. Where there was a notable woman. This is a rich woman. Amen. Yeah. A woman of means. You know women of means? There are many women of means. A notable woman. And she persuaded Elisha, this woman, she persuaded Elisha him to eat some food. So it was as often as Elisha passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. Ah, <laughs> Here is a prophet passing by. The prophet notices that there is a woman there and this woman calls Elisha to eat some food. The woman is married. To an old man. Let's read it. And he said to her, to, to her husband, look, now I know that there is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. May give you a background here. In the Old Testament, the move of God was personified in one person. The Holy Spirit in the New Testament has been given to many of us. In the Old Testament, one person carried. Moses once carried the move alone. Joshua carried the move alone. Elijah carried the move alone. Elisha carried the move alone. Okay, it will be one person carrying the move of God. The anointing for a nation. Elisha is at this time. All right. Please let us make a small upper room. This is the woman approaching the old man, her husband. I see this man is a prophet. He's always passing by. But in him passing by, I have called him for a meal. But I feel it's not enough. 
I want to maximize on the move of God that is upon him. I've called him, he comes to eat, but after eating, he goes home. The man of God goes home. So, how about if we do it differently and maximize? <laughs> Watch that. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. This woman does not want a visitation. She wants a habitation. Aha! She is tired of the move of God that visits and goes away. I want God to stay in my house. I want to detain him. <laughs> How many of you want to detain God? Aha. Watch what happens. And it happened one day that he came in there and turned into the upper room and now Elisha is sleeping in there. <laughs> Can I play around with this so that you understand? This woman is married to an old man. The old man was very secure to trust the wife. Because he could have said, ah, you want another man to come in my house? And you are creating a room. What if he will as you at night? But the old man could trust the wife. Could trust that there is something extraordinary about this man. Let's go. Then, uh, we have jumped ahead. Go back, go back to live it. And it happened one day that he came. They, he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Verse 12. Verse 12. Watch that. Then he said, this is Elisha now. Elisha has a servant. A, 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 like I have this man or other men carry my Bible. Not that I can't carry my Bible, I can but he chooses to get my pub. So he says, then he said to Gehazi, he said, call this Shunammite woman. It's called a Shunammite woman because she comes from Shunem. When he had called her, she stood before him. Verse 13. Verse 13. And he said to him, say, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us. In other words, you have taken us into your home. First of all, you were feeding us, giving us lunches. Now you have created an upper room and now we are staying here. You have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm fine. Leave me alone. I don't want you. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Leave me alone. Don't give me substitutes. Yeah. Some people are content with substitutes. Yeah. And not the real thing. Moses said, unless you go with us, we will not go. We are tired of such. We don't want angels. We want you, Lord. Amen. Aha, that's a hunger then. Eh. Then she says, so he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. When the Bible says old, that means the guy had no fire in him. Yeah? Spark plugs couldn't fire. Hmm, nothing. Nothing. Whatever they did, nothing. Even if they tried to stimulate him, nothing. Old. The dude is what? Old. <laughs> Watch now. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Verse 16. Then he said, about this time, Ah, about this time that's the special gift of faith about this time next year you shall embrace a son and the woman said no my lord man of God I know you man of God when you get excited over food you want to just tell stories no my lord do not like your maid servant Watch verse 17. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elijah had told her. I could read right up to, but we have no time. Let me stop there. Here's the thing. The woman was tired of visitations. She wanted to contain the move. 
It's one thing when you visit me. It's another thing when you stay with me. Are you hearing me? A visitor will come and go. But if I entertain God permanently, all my adjustments are permanent adjustments. Amen. If he is to impact me, he impacts me permanently. Hallelujah. If you are my visitor, you will have to go away. But if you are staying with me, I will give you everything of myself because you have made my place your habitation. Everything that is mine belongs to you. And you who tend your visitation into a habitation, everything that is yours becomes mine. And therefore you are staying with me. I don't need to be looking by the window and say you are passing by and then come for a meal and go away. Oh, can I declare to someone, you must learn to go make God your habitation. Make sure you entertain God and maximize on the visitation. Maximize. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, help me now to maximize on the visitations in the name of Jesus. Say it one more time. Help me, Lord, to maximize on the visitation. The woman conceived and the baby lived but died. Can you imagine? The prophetic word died. Remember the prophet had said, in your womb you conceive. The baby was born. The baby died. Elisha was away. And the woman got mad. Took that child. Went to the room of the prophet. And said, lie there. You are dead. If this word that has been given to me is coming from God, the same blessing will live again. It has to live. I don't care. It has to live. When God gives you a blessing under a habitation, that blessing may disappear, but it will come back to you. The baby died. Can you imagine what happened when the baby died? The woman said, circle the donkey. I must find the man who gave that prophetic word that brought this baby. And she was in a rush. They asked her, is it well with you? She said, it is well. I pray that it will be well with you in the name of Jesus. I pray that it will be well in your spirit. I pray that it will be well in your life. I pray that it will be well in your heart. I pray that it will be well with everything that you do. I don't care who you are. I don't care what circumstances you are facing. It will be well with you. I prophesy that it will be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be well with you. Ah! Listen to me. When God has given you something and it has gone away from you, I am here to declare it will be well. It will come back to you. It will come back to you. It will come back to you. It will be well with you in the name of Jesus. People may look at you and say, look at you, you lost it. You didn't lose it. You didn't lose it. Ha. The Shunammite woman went to find Elisha who was far away like normally all ushers they saw this woman desperate they tried to stop her and Elisha said leave her alone leave her alone and you know what she did when she found Elisha she held Elisha by his legs and said didn't I tell you not to lie to me man of God did I tell you not to lie to me did I not tell you to lie to me? Elisha said, I am sending my servant Gehazi to pray. The woman said, no, you are not sending any servant. It's not Gehazi who gave me the word. It is you who gave me the word. You are going with me there. Long story short, Elisha lay on the baby. The baby began to sneeze seven times and life came back. I don't know what God said to you that you seem to have lost. But I, hey, impartations.
lift up your hands today father we are prophesying life life to these men and women today in the name of Jesus some of them have lost the promise that you gave them some of them don't see a way out you told them about a spouse you told them about a gift you told them about a business empire you told them about the anointing and the grace over their lives it's been too long it will seem like the dream has died but today we are taking the dream back to the prophetic bed back to the prophetic bed the dream must live again in the name of Jesus even though the dream is dead you will resurrect that dream in Jesus name we are speaking resurrection to dead dreams resurrection to the anointings that have been lost resurrecting to situations that have died in the name of Jesus we declare today in Jesus mighty name say amen and amen I ladies and gentlemen time is not on our side oh come on put your hands together one more time for Jesus one more time 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 if you felt I was speaking to you you have a a vision a, a prophetic vision or a dream that died down come come right here let's resurrect it quickly only if you know you have a dream that died you want that dream to leave you want the dream to leave that dream must be activated again we are placing that dream that vision on the prophetic bed it must leave Shunammite woman it must leave whether you are a man or a woman you have a you have a dream you are that Shunammite woman it must leave in the name of Jesus father this is your altar dreams and visions are resurrected dreams and visions are resurrected we are asking Lord that these dreams and these visions that have died so to speak will be resurrected in the name of Jesus I lay my hands upon you today as I lay my hands I may not stay long with you there but as I touch your forehead something is being resurrected in your life today in the name of Jesus receive your dream receive your dream receive your dream say receive your dream receive your baby receive your dream receive your dream receive your dream that dream must live again receive your dream receive your dream young lady receive your dream in the name of Jesus receive your dream receive your vision again your vision liveth your dream liveth your dream liveth in the name of Jesus your dream liveth in Jesus name your dream lives in the name of Jesus receive your dream receive your dream receive your vision receive your dream receive your dream you can't die without your vision manifesting receive it 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 in the name of Jesus 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 receive it say in the name of Jesus receive your vision receive your dream may your dream come alive may your vision come alive may your dream come alive may your vision come alive may your dream come alive may that vision come alive receive it say receive it say in the name of Jesus ah receive your prophetic vision and dream receive it receive it in Jesus name receive it receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive your dream it shall be well with you 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 it 
shall be well with you in the name of Jesus it shall be well with you in Jesus name ah. our prayer meeting is only one item today I want you to find somebody next to you and say look let's look hands we are praying for your baby and my baby when I say baby I'm not talking of the natural baby here I'm talking of your vision find somebody and say let's look hands your baby must leave there is no way that dream that vision will die pray for them they will pray for you pray for them pray for them don't even wait pray for that vision to leave that vision is on the prophetic bed today it will leave this place is a prophetic bed that vision will leave may all visions leave may all dreams leave in the name of Jesus it cannot die it will leave it cannot die it must leave that's our cry that's our prayer today the vision live it the dream live it in Jesus mighty name ah it will be resurrected by the grace of God it will be resurrected by the anointing of the Holy Spirit the dream lives the vision lives in Jesus name we prophesy over many dead dreams dead visions we declare live again in Jesus name live again in Jesus name around this place even all facets that appear to be dead may they live again in Jesus name oh live again we declare we declare we prophesy visions visions multitudes visions of entities live again in the name of Jesus this is our declaration today this is our cry today it must live it must live the baby will live again the baby will sneeze seven times and live again in the name of Jesus life life is what we declare in the name of Jesus let it be so in Jesus name let it be so in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Ah, stand up, stand up, stand up. I will continually teach you to sow here until you understand the idea of sowing into a word some of you come from places where you don't understand I have envelopes here so into your words you may sow many times before you see manifestation come and get an envelope here come and sow sow into your word your baby must leave whatever dream vision it must leave it must leave it must leave it must leave in the name of Jesus that thing that has died must live it must live so into it it's a spiritual principle if you don't understand it stay where you are you catch up with it next year it must live it must live do you know what Elisha did he went into his room the upper room he found the baby dead there he put his nose to the nose of the baby his hands his feet he aligned his body to the body of the baby and the baby started sneezing when your vision comes to life it doesn't come instantly it starts by sneezing rejoice at one sneeze when you see traces of life begin to give God the glory when you begin to see life begin to give God the glory it could be one thing that is telling that something is beginning to happen don't give up keep on celebrating that keep on rejoicing over that eventually the baby will sneeze seven times and it will live again and your vision will live again from February 97 when the prophetic word came about this place the baby sneezed many years it took 20 years to be where we are from the prophetic word Things of the spirit are very strange. They take time. Some of them. Some of them don't. You are writing there. 
my baby must leave your baby is your vision I will teach you spiritual principles that will help you down the line and one of them is the key of sowing into a word that you have received very important to you very important to all of us it's giving time now and we must stand stand with your envelope let me give you a few minutes to write please do write thank you here is my envelope too this Shunammite woman was very aggressive she approached the prophet who was far away held him by his foot shook him the ushers tried to say this the man of God said the man the woman is troubled leave her alone in following after her the baby lived sometimes God imparts to us visions and dreams and many things choke those visions and dreams and many people bury those things and leave them yet they came from God Please, don't bury what God has told you to do. Resurrect it. Today, it must leave. Please stand with me. Lift up your envelopes as we pray. Declare with me, Lord Jesus. My vision is being resurrected. I refuse, like the woman of Shunem, to let my vision die. I'm taking it back to where it came from. You are the source, and this is my seed. My vision must live in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and join me here to put your offering there, please. about principles of impartation. We are ready to go home. Stand please. Put that scripture in Numbers 6. Is it Numbers chapter 6? You are playing well. Oh, whoever is playing. <laughs> but this is music. <laughs> oh my God. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to Aaron and his son saying this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel say to them the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you Aha. the Lord make his face shine upon you and be very 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 gracious to you may the grace of God be your rear guard and your frontal guard. Go in peace. May God meet you at the point of your need, Shunammite woman. May your baby live in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together like your baby is sneezing now. One more time. Hey, goodbye. We'll catch up with you Saturday. Don't forget Saturday, 9 o'clock. We are evangelizing. Let's meet here Saturday, 9. May God bless you.
wanna know 